Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Lightroom has a fundamental flaw that no one talks about and it's hurting your landscape edit. See, they give you sliders for everything except the most important part of your image. The entire area in the middle of your histogram is where most of your photograph lives. And Lightroom gives you no dedicated way to control it. Not a slider, not a tool, just a vague exposure adjustment that hits everything at once. And here's the worst part of it all. If you're just getting started, Lightroom actually trains you to think this entire section of your photo is just exposure. That's not only wrong, it's a massive disservice to how we edit high dynamic range landscapes. Let me show you what they should have given us and what the workaround I use is instead. So take a look at the histogram right here. You've got your black tones, your shadows, your highlights, your white tones, and then right in the center, the midtones. This is where the bulk of your photo lives, especially in a complex, high contrast scenes like uh, sunrise, sunset, forest light. But here's the problem. Lightroom gives you specific sliders to target black tones, shadows, highlights, and white tones, but absolutely nothing for the midtones. Instead, it gives you the exposure slider and labels it in a way that suggests it's for the middle of the histogram, but that's very, very misleading. Check this out here. See, as I hover over the histogram, you see right here, this is your black tones. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner, wherever I hover, it's gonna basically say what this section is. So this right here is your black tones. This right here is your shadows. If I flip to the right side, this right here is your white tones and then your highlights. And then everything in the middle here is your midtones. But as you can see, Lightroom doesn't call it midtones. Lightroom calls it exposure. See, this entire area here is exposure. And you can actually click right on the histogram and make adjustments. So let me just open the basic section so you can see this. If I come over here to the, what Lightroom is saying is exposure, which is really midtones, and I click it and I drag it to the right, you can see the entire histogram shifting to the right. And if you look at the exposure slider below, you can see that that is being impacted as well. So if I bring this all the way up to five stops, you can see that the entire image is affected. If I bring it all the way down, and bring it all the way down to as far as I can go, which is minus five stops, and you can see that the entire image is completely black from, for the most part. And as I swing this back and forth, you can see that exposure slider is impacting every single pixel in this image. Basically everything in this photograph is being impacted by exposure right here. See, exposure pushes and pulls the entire image. It doesn't isolate midtones, it shifts the entire histogram. So if your midtones are too dark or too bright, and you reach for the exposure slider, you're also gonna, you're probably gonna blow out your highlights or you're crushing your black tones. It's a blunt instrument when you really need a scalpel most. See, as landscape photographers, we're often dealing with extreme lighting conditions, bright skies, deep shadows, and that critical middle ground that gives our photos depth and form and realism. So think about this, like soft light hitting mountain slopes, uh, ambient detail in, in foreground foliage, uh, reflected tones in water, these are all midtones. This is a really cool way to see this. If I come over here to the tone curve, there is this little icon here in the upper left-hand corner. If I click this and I drag it all over my photograph, you see the anchor points right here that are gonna appear on this line, this plot line. As I move this around, you can basically see where these tones live. So basically anything that, it, that resides that's gonna show up on this plot line from here to here, so this upper right hand where this uh, line intersects to this bottom left hand area where this line intersects, everything in the middle here is basically midtones. So as I move this around, look at this, all of the sky, everything in the sky is midtones. If I come down to the waterfall, you can see that, that that anchor point has moved to the upper right hand corner. So these are gonna be highlights, your white tones, same thing right here, these are brighter tones but pretty much everything around here is going to be midtones. If I come over here in this darker area, you can see that this is shadows. If I come over here, this area is shadows. Down here, shadows. But everything else, all through here, these are all midtones. So it would be safe to say that the majority of this photograph actually is midtones. And that's the case with most images. As I move this all around, you can see this in real time, how everything all through here, the entire sky, all of this area falls within that midtone region. But without a tool to control midtones directly, we're forced to either crush contrast or flatten the scene. You're stuck choosing basically between drama and detail when you should have control over both. 
what Lightroom should have done is given us a dedicated mid-tone slider, a way to, to shift the brightness of this critical area without touching the highlights and without impacting the shadows at the same time. So if Adobe, Lightroom, if you are listening, putting a mid-tone slider right here, right underneath shadows and right above the white point or white tones would have been absolutely amazing. Mid-tone slider right here would be perfect. Simple, right? But, but since they didn't, let me show you how I've learned to, to work around it. You could use the tone curve for this, but I've got a much easier and a much better solution for you. But first, if you do wanna use the tone curve to impact the mid-tones, let me show you real quick how to do that. So if, I'm, if I wanna come over here to exposure, you can see what this is doing. This Obviously, this we've already went over this. This exposure slider is impacting pretty much the entire photograph. Every area of the histogram is impacted here. So let's come down to tone curve. And as we discussed earlier, pretty much everything from this bottom left intersection point to this upper right intersection point, everything in the middle here are your mid-tones. So if I just put an anchor point right here in the center and just lift this area up just a little bit, you can see that the area up here on the histogram, the left side of the shadows and the black tones is not being impacted. The area on the right side, the white tones and the highlights is not being impacted. The only thing that's being impacted is the mid-tones in the center here. And as I move this up and down, you can see that in real time. So if I just wanted to do a slight mid-tone boost to the uh, this overall photograph, something very subtle right there, and as I toggle this on and off, you can see what that has done right there. So let me just reset this. Now, a better solution for this is this right here. So if I come over here to the tone curve, close down tone curve, and I'm gonna come over here to color grading. See color, or I should say Lightroom, gives you the ability to tint your shadows, your highlights, and your mid-tones a specific color. But most importantly, there is a luminant slider associated with each one of these. So if I just come over here to mid-tones, this right here is your shadows, this right here is your highlights, this right here in the center is your mid-tones. And if I come down here to luminance, so I'm not gonna tint my mid-tones any specific color. What I really want is that luminance slider. And if you're not familiar with what luminance is, it's basically the brightness value of something. So if I take this luminance slider and I bring it all the way up, look at this, look at the histogram. The area in the shadows and the area in the highlights is not being impacted at all. So I go from negative 100 to positive 100. The only area that's being impacted is the mid-tones or the center portion of that histogram, which is super, super powerful. It is a workaround, but it does work very, very well. So as I toggle this on and off, and I've got this boosted more than I really would in, in, in real life, but I want you to easily be able to see this. But as I toggle this on and off, you can see what that has done right there. Nice and clean, only targeting the actual mid-tones and leaving the shadows, leaving the black tones alone, not touching the highlights, not touching the white point, only impacting that critical portion in the center of the histogram, the mid-tones. Now let's put it all together. This raw file right here has bright areas in the water, deep shadows in the trees, and a whole lot of total information in the middle. And watch what happens when I try to fix the mid-tones using exposure, and then I'll compare it to the mid-tone luminance method. So I'm gonna come up here to the basics section, and let's just come up here to the, the super blunt exposure tool. And as I bring this up, look at this, it's impacting everything, we already know that. But let's just kind of bring it up to a point right here, just shifting that histogram. This is where we were before. Let me reset that. And I just want to move that histogram to the right just a little bit, just to add a little bit of brightness to the overall photograph. But as you can see, it's impacting everything. This area on the left side, the shadows here, and the area on the right side are critical to this photograph because I like those areas a little bit darker and the light is in the background and this beautiful kind of tunneling effect of these trees. Having the left and right side of this image a little bit darker and the background brighter creates a lot of depth in this photograph. So when I bring up the exposure here, you can see that it's basically brightening up everything. It's brightening up all of those shadows and you can see that in the histogram here as well. And I don't want that at all. So if I come down here to the color grading tool, we already have mid-tone selected right here. And if I bring up the luminance, I'll bring it up all the way so you can easily see this. Look at this. It is not impacting the shadows in the left. It's not impacting the shadows in the right. It's not impacting the shadows down here. It's not impacting the shadows anywhere. And it's leaving all of the highlights alone. It is only impacting the mid-tones. And as I toggle this on and off, you can see what that has done. A very, very nice adjustment right there. I got another photograph right here. This is another very good example of this. So if we come up here to the basics section, if I wanna add some exposure to this, you can see it is impacting everything. We don't want that at all. I'm gonna come down here to the color grading section, to the midtones, and I'm gonna bring up the luminance 
just a little bit right here. And I can toggle this on and off before and after, before and after, very, very subtle. I'm gonna bring it up even more so you can see this easily at home, before and after. Now, something that is cool about the tone curve, if you do wanna use the tone curve, is you have the ability to use the tone curve with masks. For some odd reason, Lightroom does not give you the ability to use masks with color grading. So this is a pretty cool little workaround here as well. As you can see, let me come here to tone curve. I wanna show you something. See this area up here? Look at the plot line on the, on the, uh, the tone curve. All of this area up here is really mid-tones. All of this is, the entire sky. And if I don't really want to brighten up the sky, if I like the sky being dark and ominous and moody, I want to leave that alone. This is pretty neat here. Watch this. I'm going to create a new mask. I'm going to do a radial gradient. I'm going to drag it right across here to this area. So the barn, a little bit of the foreground, the mountains in the background to this right here. And now I'm going to come over here to the tone curve and I'm going to put an anchor point right here in the center of the midtones. And I'm just going to lift it up just a little bit like this and watch as I toggle this on and off. So now I just did a mid-tone adjustment to the center portion of the photograph, leaving the sky alone. So that's pretty cool that you do have access to the tone curve inside or while using a mask. Really wish Lightroom would give us the ability to have color grading with masks, maybe one day, but not right now. But this is an amazing um, uh, technique or approach or method <laughs> to being very targeted with how you impact your overall photograph. The midtones are absolutely crucial part of your photograph and being able to impact that independently without impacting your shadows, your black tones, your white tones, or your highlights, being able to focus just on the midtones is really going to add that little bit of pop to your photograph. So I do hope that information was helpful. And before I do wrap things up here, I just wanna say a huge thanks to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace offers a stunning user-friendly platform to build your website. With their Blueprint AI design system, you can showcase your photography and create a standout online presence with ease. Plus, built-in Squarespace SEO tools help your site appear in more searches, making it easier for the right customers to find you. And if you're looking to sell online, Squarespace's online store feature provides everything you need to sell your physical goods, digital content, or services seamlessly. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out Squarespace com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. I hope you did find something useful in this week's video. If you did enjoy it, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.